Today's video is about the Cummins diesel engine major selection decision that faces every potential 2026 and 2027 diesel powered motorhome buyer. Purchasing a 2026 model year motorhome ensures it will be powered by the current 450 horsepower EPA 2017 L9 Cummins engine or the current 605 horsepower EPA 2024 X15 Cummins engine. But if you decide instead to purchase a 2027 model year motorhome, it will have the new Cummins EPA 2027 X10 or X15 diesel engines that are completely new from the ground up. They are soup to nuts physically, mechanically, and exhaust after treatment system brand spanking new power platforms. You need to make an informed decision which power platform you want to trust to propel your adventures. So it's about, I don't know, 8.45 now, and uh, we're talking about one of the features on the end of today's uh, RV Expo Music City 2025 National Indoor. Got all the words wrong and backwards, but what they've done right here is they've given you every experience. Now you get to see what these babies look like at night when they're traveling down the road if that at all trips your trigger. And you can see that the RVs are all still open and you can still tour them all. So as you're willowing down your choices, you can go and have some personal time with each one of these rigs. <laughs> You, you laugh. Personal time. You laugh. Well, maybe that it pertains. Sounds, it sounds naughty. Yeah, it pertains maybe more to the engine compartment for the guys. But oh, okay. you know okay. what I'm talking about. I mean, look at how cool this, yeah, this looks. All lit up. It's like it's like Christmas and everybody's wow. got lights on. Yeah. This is an older Spartan chassis and 605 horsepower Cummins diesel engine that I captured in episode number 205 while at National Indoor Atlanta in November of 2021. Initially, I did not understand why an exposed engine and chassis was not on display at this 2025 Expo like it was at last year's 2024 Expo. After all, the Music City Expo is all about RV education and unlimited access and availability for you to learn everything you can about these complex and expensive machines. It was only by talking with all of the motorhome brand presidents, CEOs, designers, marketing teams, and Freightliner folks that the light bulb in my head went off. The Cummins EPA 2027 engine is so new with so many changes that the display motors didn't even exist yet. Cummins literally doesn't have enough of the new engines produced to provide a demo motor just for us to look at. The current 605 horsepower Cummins engine is part of the Cummins X15 performance series and began production in January of 2017. This means this engine will have almost nine years of service history behind it before it is being retired. You have to decide if that nine years of history is more important to you than getting the latest and greatest shiny new design that we're gonna discuss next. So first let me say that I'm not one of those people that poo-poos something just because it's brand new. In fact, having been in engineering and in particular engineering development for many years, I understand the resistance you get from the customers when you try to improve and move on in the evolution of your product. 
And let's remember that the evolution of this product is partially dictated by the laws and regulations that Cummins has to follow. Now, they've invested about $1 billion, that's with a B, on this program, so they've certainly got a lot of engineering and effort into it. So if you don't have the time to watch the video that's playing in the background uh, in its entirety, I'll give you the Cliff Notes version. If you were to watch it, you would learn about the new 35,000 PSI high pressure fuel pump system and the fuel lift pump. The new water pump design, the new turbocharger design, the new turbocharger activator design, the new piston designs, the new fuel pump injectors, the new closed crankcase application devices, the new repackaged form factor EGR cooler. But the really big deal that you'll learn about is the added 48 volt alternator with dedicated belt drive. And please note that this alternator is so heavy duty and so big and such an important system to keep running cool. It is in fact water cooled. There's four years of research and development, 19,000 hours of testing, and 5.5 million miles of road testing that went into this engine. It also, by the way, is a new block design with a reduced weight. 50 pounds has been taken out of it so that they can add things in like the alternator and not impact the weight at all. There's also a new ECM module with cybersecurity technology on board. You got to ask yourself, what could possibly go wrong with such few new changes to a new engine design? Well, the articles that I've been reading say you want to keep an eye out on this new twin module after treatment setup. Turns out that this assembly is heavier than what currently is being used and that was part of the reason why they took weight out of the block so that the design itself could be neutral in terms of adding no additional weight. The thing you're going to want to keep your eye on is the fact that there's two 5 kilowatt heaters that work in this system to keep the exhaust temperature elevated enough when needed to be able to burn off all of the pollutants that it has to burn off. Now, how these heaters are powered is by that new 48 volt water-cooled alternator that I told you about. If you watch this video in its entirety, you'll learn that all of those canisters are made to be modular so that you can dive in and work on them as things go wrong. But I read it as, oh my God, uh, you can really dive into this thing if you have to. Why did they feel the need to make it that easy to be able to start disassembling and fiddling with? Yikes. So after I was done watching the hours of videos that it took to learn more about the Cummins engine changes that are coming down the pike, I decided that I needed to summarize it and put it in outline form for folks to look at. It was at that time that I decided to take a chance with Google Studio AI, and I posed the question, what would some of the maintenance issues be with the new EPA 27 Cummins 605 horsepower diesel engine? Question mark. And scrolling on screen, you will see the answer. It was amazingly accurate. So with the success of that question to Google AI Studio, I got cocky and I said, hey, should I buy a motorhome with the current Cummins X15 605 horsepower diesel engine or wait for the next model year with the new EPA 27 Cummins 605 horsepower diesel engine? And here was the amazing answer to that question. 
I was really quite blown away when the AI divided the argument into should you buy now or should you wait? And it had the pros and cons of each of those discussions. But it was the final thoughts that really impressed me because it knew that the answer to that question depended upon who you were and what kind of customer you were. Were you a fleet manager or were you just a regular RVer? And as a subset, were you a younger RVer or were you an older RVer? And how long were you planning on keeping your RV? So where did I get that bogey that the new engines are going to be between thirty and forty thousand dollars more? Let's take a listen. So, where do we stand today? Well, there are currently nineteen thousand three hundred and forty-three new motorhomes on dealers' lots versus trailing twelve-month sales of thirty-five thousand four hundred thirty-one units, or a six-point-five-five month supply. So we are getting very close to the steady state of a six-month supply. While final pricing is not yet known, the price increase of the new CARB ACT EPA compliant engines, which will be in model years 2027 coaches, are anticipated to be thirty to forty thousand more dollars than the engines currently being used in the new model year 2026 coaches. When you factor in the stock market's volatility, a 57 percent decline in Class A diesel coach sales from its peak, current dealer inventory levels, and the looming price increase of engines, this sure feels like what a market bottom feels like. Remember, prices always reach their lowest before sales reach their bottom. When sales reach their absolute bottom, it means supply and demand are in equilibrium and prices are rising. My point, if you're contemplating purchasing a motorhome, sometime over the next year will certainly be the time to do it. So, so. 